Five Eyewitness News reporter Naomi Peskovitz is live in St. Paul. You've been talking to people, and they have a lot of stake in this. Brad Benita, we talked to one business leader who was a part of that initial group who challenged this law in court in the first place. He obviously was not happy with the decision, wanted the law, especially that mandate to be overturned. But we also talked to someone from the Nurses Association. She says the law actually doesn't go far enough. I totally believe that we should have a Medicare for all system where everyone has coverage. 100% of people in America can go to the doctor and not worry about become, going bankrupt without worrying about losing everything that they have because they were unfortunate and happened to get sick. We wanted to know what today's ruling will have on nurses, uh, what kind of impact it will have on nurses who work on the front lines in hospitals. Linda Hamilton is the president of the Minnesota Nurses Association. You're here to come in and comment about this. Thanks so much for coming in. Um, you said earlier today that this is an important first step, but more needs to be done. Explain that a little bit. This bill here offers insurance to many, many millions of patients that can now receive health care. However, it still leaves some behind. And we truly believe as nurses, every patient, every citizen here in Minnesota deserves health care. And being a nurse, you mm -hmm. see people coming in, struggling maybe to pay their bills. Uh, and do you have maybe a particular story that kind of stands out in your mind of, of, of something that did happen? Yeah, I had a young lady who worked in the newborn, or excuse me, who was a patient in the newborn intensive care where I work. This young lady has had lifelong issues with her health. As she graduated from college, she found out she can't get insurance. This particular bill will allow her to be covered under her parents' insurance until she's age 26. At that time, the entire Affordable Care Act will be in place and she will be covered because pre-existing conditions will no longer be allowed. What would you say to someone who is against today's ruling? I would say that Let's see what it does, because I truly, truly believe this will decrease costs. But we also need to move forward and really look at that and see that how we can get more people covered for less money, because when they're covered early, then they go to the doctor earlier and they're less sick. It costs us all less. Okay. All right, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your perspective today, Linda. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, let's get an update now on the news and how the news has affected hospitals and health care uh, providers in Washington. So it's a con for small business owners, but what about the people on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, Ellen? Well, Jessica, you will find doctors and nurses who aren't happy with today's decision, but we did talk to actually both the Minnesota Medical Association and the president of the Minnesota Nurses Association, and both say overall it's a positive change, and there's hope that hospital nurses will see fewer patients. My anticipation is those who now have coverage will go to that doctor's office soon enough so they don't end up in my intensive care. Two more notes from our experts. If people get more preventative care, emergency room congestion could improve, and local medical device and drug companies could see a surge in new customers. Now let's go back to you, Jess, because... I want to talk more about this now. Joining us live is Bernadine Engeldorf. She is a nurse with the Minnesota Nurses Association. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. You know, as a balance here, we should say that clearly there are folks who think this uh, violates personal liberties, that it could kill small business. But as a nurse in a hospital setting, why do you find this so important? Well, I think what is really important is that people are going to have access to health care now that maybe they didn't have the opportunity because of the economic um, impact of not having insurance. Give us some examples in a hospital setting, things you see where insurance is so important. Well, I work in mental health in particular, um, and one of the things we see uh, is a combination not only of treating mental health, but treating physical health. People don't seek care early and therefore become, they're in crisis, not only emotionally, but physically because they haven't cared for themselves on a preventative level. And when they don't seek uh, help early, things just get worse and at the end of the day it costs more. At the end of the day it costs more. They get worse, they're in the hospital, they may, they may have an extended um, 
hospitalization not only for their emotional status, but the fact that physically they haven't cared for themselves and their diabetes is out of control. Their cardiac status hasn't been treated. They haven't taken medication. They can't afford it. Minnesota Nurses Association really calling this just a first step. This Absolutely. What do, you, what do they mean by that? A first step because we, we strongly believe that, yes, while this is a first step because people will be given access to health care that haven't had it, we strongly believe that there's a need for Medicare for all. Mm -hmm. And that we shouldn't need to wait till 65 to have a universal health care system so that all people can get all care, plus better cost control, mm -hmm. um, as we're not sure that this will 100% um, impact cost control. Ber uh, Bernadine Engeldorf, registered nurse. Yes. Thanks so much for your, your time. Do appreciate it. Going to send it back to you, Megan.